In this video, I'm going to discuss the benefits of composing at the computer with notation software versus using pen and paper to write music. So using a computer and notation software uh, can be a lot quicker and efficient uh, if you're thinking about speed here, um, but it can lead to sloppier and more rushed pieces, uh, whereas if you use pen and paper, uh, the, the piece can be a lot more creative, nuanced, and original in my opinion, um, but of course it's time consuming. And just some caveats for this video, those are just generalizations uh, that I stated, um, and of course there are exceptions to the rule. And a lot of composers don't strictly do just computer and just use pen and paper. There's often a mix between the two in their creative process. Um, so I, I don't want to explore just the extremes uh, too much, but uh, I think most composers have a mix of both. And those generalizations come from my own experience, plus uh, they're backed up by the experience of several other composers that are more established uh, that I researched from books, uh, from websites and other online sources and biographies. So I think this applies to a lot of composers and the things I'm about to mention. Um, but let's just keep in mind that everyone is different and the process is different and some people might uh, do something um, just because that's just how they've been um, trained and taught that way. But uh, yeah, let's go on to the video. So let's talk about using a computer or Sibelius or any other notation software, MuseScore or whatever. Um, I'm just kind of using Sibelius as a placeholder for any notation software here. So the most obvious benefit of using a computer is the efficiency and speed that comes with it. There's nothing that beats that comparing to uh, handwriting everything. It's just super easy to um, be able to input notes using a MIDI keyboard or um, using like the copy paste feature or duplicate feature to just copy a similar musical motif or cell just really quickly and um, the, the tools and other uh, plugins that you can use that allow you to uh, for example in Sibelius you can take like a four voice um, uh, part on a single staff and then explode it onto four stabs really easily uh, and those features that you can only get really with notation software and I think that's one of the biggest um, alluring things about using notation software is this ability to be a lot more productive and just turn things out a lot quicker. And I want to talk about legibility here too. Um, for example, I've been a part of uh, several composing competitions that I've submitted my music to and there's almost uh, no competitions that allow you to submit um, handwritten scores or parts. Uh, they always want to have legible uh, pieces produced um, uh, by nota notation software and it's just kind of a, a industry standard in, in a way uh, most players want to be able to easily read your music especially in rehearsal time um, I feel like uh, in this day and age most people already use notation software to for using parts and um, using them in professional performance um, but yeah I think legibility is important here I think it's a lot harder to read a handwritten score uh, just because you know everyone is different um, in their handwriting and and when you look at a, a printed score from that's made in notation software uh, it's just a lot more legible and it's unified and easier to read uh, so yeah and in notation software you can use playback features to play your music back through a MIDI realization of some sort um, and just hear your piece in real time and uh, something you can't get from a pen and paper is is hearing what it sounds like um, in real time of course if you have a piano next to you that's a different story um, but especially in notation software you can use something like note performer 3 which is uh, a really cool AI um, playback engine that plays back uh, instruments really realistically and that is that comes in super useful for uh, orchestral settings and other uh, chamber groups where you don't want to hear just piano sound you, you want to hear the other instruments and there's a lot of benefits to that and I know composers say you shouldn't be using the playback feature like to base um, your composing off of it's just uh, it's not realistic really uh, and the playback in a computer is going to be way different than in real life and I, I do agree with that uh, in some respects um, but you can't I'll argue that that feature can be really useful when you're trying to just hear something, especially if you're a beginning composer. It's a lot harder to uh, do some like audiation in your head and like hear what it sounds like while you're writing it. So I think that's one of the big uh, features of using notation software too. Another great feature of using notation software is part extraction. Uh, so what this is is basically when you write uh, a band piece, for example, there's a lot of instruments. Uh, and you want to be able to distribute the parts to the players so you can't just give the players the whole score with all uh, you know 30 instruments on it you want to be able to 
give them uh, just their parts so that they can easily read the, the music and they all come together. And the conductor just has the big score and everyone has their individual parts. And in notation software, you have to, you, you are able to uh, extract the parts easily with just like the press of a button, essentially. And when you work with a handwritten score, uh, it's way harder. You have to do everything by hand and that can take hours, if not days um, or weeks even to just get all the parts out. And uh, the ability to tweak and change things and just edit on, and, that, and, and it updating across the entire uh, piece and through all the parts is just something you can't beat from notation software. The last big one I want to discuss is easily distributing and sharing your music and just getting it out there online really easily. And of course with like a handwritten score you can just uh, scan it and just use, uh, make a PDF out of that. Um, but of course we're talking about the legibility thing and when we're talking about publishing something, most often it's not going to be handwritten at all. Like any publisher or um, any uh, potential purchaser or ensemble that wants to play your music would love to see a uh, engraved uh, score. Uh, that looks good um, using notation software just because of the legibility thing and uh, using uh, notation software easily allows you to export it as a PDF as well as all the parts obviously and you can just simply email that or just share it online to your portfolio website or whatnot so yeah just being able to share and easily distribute it uh, is just another great feature of notation software. And a composer I want to bring up from a video I did pretty recently actually um, is Julie Giroux and she is a composer that um, strictly, I wouldn't say strictly, this was written a couple years ago in this book, uh, let me get it, it's called Composers on Composing for Band Volume 2 and she's a band composer and uh, in, in her entry she says during her creative process uh, she just uses the computer and the actual computer keyboard not like a MIDI keyboard or anything uh, to write music straight into notation software and of course this could have changed because this is like two get two decades old but um, yeah using just the computer software and notation software and a computer keyboard to input notes uh, and I'll share a quote from that last video quote I became comfortable with getting the music on the page very quickly too comfortable my fingers and my brain found notes but over the years my fingers have developed a certain way they like to play and pick out similar intervals sounds directions and chords no matter what i did they had some influence on my music i didn't want that to happen anymore so i got rid of the keyboard she continues there isn't any combination of notes that you're going to bang out that you haven't already hit before so why do it why limit your music to that box if the keyboard restrains my imagination anyway, I want it gone." End quote. So using like a piano or a MIDI keyboard can just restrict you just because you're so used to putting your hands in a certain way or just thinking about things um, in a certain way, certain intervals and other sounds that come from just improvising at the piano and writing it down. And her uh, solution in a way is to just use computer software right away. And I think a big uh, thing here for her is uh, also speed and the efficiency that we mentioned earlier. Now we're going to go on to using just paper for composing, uh, manuscript paper and pencil or pen or whatever. Uh, so we're going to talk about how you can be a lot more nuanced and creative arguably using just pen and paper. Uh, and the reason I say this and I'm so confident in this is just from my own experience. Uh, when I write something simply by hand, um, I can be a lot more uh, deliberate and um, think a lot more intensely and clearly about a certain uh, musical idea and, and elaborate it a lot more. Uh, and especially in a larger setting, let's say if it's like an orchestral setting, um, just the textures and the um, the interline movement and inner voices and all sorts of things and rhythm rhythmically, I can be a lot. More, I'm a lot less uh, restricted by the use of a computer because. When you use a computer, you're probably going to use uh, a lot of the features a lot more such as like copying and pasting and uh, just skipping over things because using a computer is just super easy to just uh, distribute uh, all the uh, different musical ideas to different instruments. Uh, and using a pen and paper will just allow you to stop for a moment because uh, you obviously can't move that fast using pen and paper. Your hand can only do one thing at a time uh, and you're just a lot more deliberate with writing music and that is, there's an art to that and it, it, it's, a, it's an alluring thing that I'm sure a lot of uh, we'll call fundamentalists uh, prefer. And the thoughtfulness and uh, being more nuanced with writing music by hand uh, is probably one of the biggest um, things that I want to uh, hark on with this point. 
Uh, I do want to mention that this is kind of a dying art. Uh, there's a lot less composers these days that simply write um, with manuscript paper only. Uh, some people uh, don't even use a piano at all to check their sound. Some just stick strictly to pen and paper, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I don't even think I can do that. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's more of an extreme in that sense. Uh, rarely do composers just use pen and paper, and rarely do most composers at all use pen and paper at all because notation software has gotten so uh, so much better and so so widespread and accepted. Um, but I think that that is, is rather unfortunate because there is um, some beauty to just writing with pen and paper. Uh, that nuance I was talking about, it's it's the uh, ability to the tactile feeling of paper and then using a number two pencil and the smell of lead. Uh, there's something um, really uh, crafty about it. Uh, there's just this sort of uh, handmade uh, personal touch to it that uh, a lot of composers just love. Um, one composer on the top of my head right now, Eric Whitaker, he writes everything by hand, uh, even though he's tried other notation software. Uh, he said like there's nothing like the feeling of, of paper and then uh, using a pencil and erasing things and just the smell of, um, I guess, the lead uh, that you know gets him to feel like he's actually writing uh, music and making art as opposed to just uh, tapping away on a keyboard. So. So a composer that uses mainly just paper uh, and pencil to write their music uh, is Mark Camphouse, and he is another band composer, uh, and I'll share one of his quotes. My basic equipment includes, ideally, a freshly tuned real piano, not some ghastly electronic imposter, a handful of freshly sharpened number two pencils, a generous stack of freshly opened manuscript paper, and a pot of freshly brewed high-test coffee. So Mark prefers having um, the old, uh, the old school tactile approach to composing, um, and yeah, th I think there this nuance of of being able to actually feel like you're making art uh, in a physical sense is really important to a lot of people, and I think that's one of the alluring things as well uh, that that convert people to go in the old school in that way as opposed to using a computer. Now keep in mind, I mentioned that not a lot of composers use uh, strictly pen and paper to write. Uh, obviously I know, including myself, that I do use manuscript paper and sit at the piano to write, but that's only in the first few stages of writing. That's more of just like an idea generation slash uh, drafting and just getting the, the structure laid out or something like that. Uh, rarely do composers do that the entire process. I'd say most composers, um, or a lot of composers, uh, like starting with pen and paper with manuscript at the piano here, uh, but then they move to computer to uh, either, uh, that's kind of like the, the publishing phase or just um, engraving and getting all the parts laid out and just making it look good and uh, like a computerized score, obviously. Um, but yeah, what I'm talking about here, when we say like a super fundamental composer that sticks to manuscript is, you know, writing the entire score out with pen and paper, uh, yeah, pen and paper, and then the parts as well. Uh, that of course is an extreme, and I want to bring up a quote uh, from a composer who does, does just that. I do not compose on the computer, although when I was still teaching up until 1992, I encouraged my students to learn this process. My time though is limited. Perhaps it is because I did a lot of drawing and design when I was young that I am able to handwrite music quickly. When I was in Paris and money was short, I wrote not only scores to my compositions, but parts as well. Yeah, so that is kind of insane. I feel like a lot of composers that continue to just use pen and paper uh, the entire way, uh, usually it, it was a result of either they're a little older in age, because that was the only option back in the day, because obviously notation software wasn't uh, didn't even exist, and then you know, it took a long time for it to get to the point where it is today, where it's a lot more reliable and you know, a better option for people. Uh, so I feel like a lot of composers that do just pen and paper are either older or they were trained to uh, by their composition teachers that are just mentors uh, that encourage them to use just pen and paper because I think that is also a factor. Because I know a lot of younger composers these days that uh, continue to just use pen and paper. Uh, and that, it, obviously that is just uh, something that uh, was passed on to them by their own teachers and other influences. Um, and possibly by their own free, free will, but um, yeah, it is kind of interesting. I think uh, it's good to have a mix of both, um, of using uh, pen and paper and then 
also going to computer for that speed and efficiency. And just remember that a lot of composers don't either do the extremes here. They don't just use a computer or just use manuscript paper. There are some in between that use a mix of both. And one of those composers is uh, Timothy Broege. Uh, that I mentioned in, in an earlier video, um, but he prefers using both, and I think that's one of the, the things that I can relate to, so I'll share what he thinks about this. I write all of my music on 11 by 17 inch score paper using ballpoint pen. After all corrections and improvements have been made, I set the piece up on the computer using Finale Music Software, which I find enormously helpful for score preparation and extraction of parts. Yeah, like I just mentioned, uh, the efficiency of a computer is, uh, you can't really beat that. Um, but I do find that a lot more useful in the later stages of writing a composition. In the earlier stages, I think, um, I do recommend to people to use a piano and real handwritten, uh, score, uh, uh ideas that you write down on manuscript paper, uh, just because there's, there has to be some sort of, um, uh, ability to be a lot more creative using the pen and paper method uh, just because you know you slow down you're a lot more deliberate about thinking about certain things and uh, using a computer right at the get-go in the beginning uh, I feel like that can end up harming the piece uh, in some ways just because you, you could be potentially rushing it or um, simply using too much copy and paste. To see how using the piano influences the composing process and whether or not it's uh, a good idea to do when you're writing music, then go ahead and check out that video up here and I discuss just that. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see other videos on productivity, I actually have a productivity playlist on videos on increasing your efficiency and other areas in terms of being more productive as a composer, uh, so check that playlist out after this. Lastly, if you got any sort of value or were inspired by something in this video, go ahead and leave a like down below and that'll show the YouTube algorithm that you enjoy my content and I can share my uh, advice to other composers on the internet. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and keep writing.